Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we are starting our discussion of AP Chemistry Unit 8, Section 5, which is all about acid-base titrations. There's a lot going on here, so it's going to take me three videos to get through, through this section, but uh, we're going to be able to, uh, to understand this just fine once we get through those. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, consider clicking that uh, subscribe button. That way you won't miss a thing of all my 100 plus AP Chemistry uh, daily videos, as well as AP review videos and problem walkthroughs, all kinds of good things there. As we jump into acid-base titrations, you might remember that we just barely stuck our, our toe into this back in Unit 4. Uh, specifically, an acid-base titration is a method of determining the precise concentration in molarity of an acid or a base. And the way this works is we put a solution, normally it's the base, into a burette, which is a long slender tube, and we put a precise amount of the other solution, which is normally the acid, into an Erlenmeyer flask down below. And then we also put some acid base indicator into that flask down below. That way we'll know when the reaction is complete. Uh, and when you dispense the solution from that burette, eventually the, uh, the acid solution down below, the mixture, changes color, and then you know that the reaction is done. That's called the end point. So this is what that looks like. Here is your burette up top, and here's your Erlenmeyer flask. And like I said, you'll probably put a few drops of acid base indicator into the flask as well. That way you know that when the color changes, the reaction is done. Now, the moment at which the moles of acid equal the moles of base, that's your equivalence point. Notice we have that here. And the moment when the color changes is called the end point. And some students will confuse those two. Know that there is a difference. The equivalence point is a stoichiometric point. The end point is what we see with our eyes. And so there, there is a difference there. We're going to work a few problems with titrations today. But the first problem that we're going to work with, the first series of problems, has to do with what I call the titration equation. MAVA equals MBVB. And this is how we can calculate the amount of volume of an acid or a base we're going to need in order to get to the equivalence point. Now, the M sub A stands for the molarity of the acid. And that's uh, that may be given to us in the problem, we might have to calculate that, whatever the case may be. V sub A is the volume of that acid. M sub B is the molarity of the base. And then V sub B is the volume of the base. Of course, molarity is moles per liter. Volume is normally going to be in milliliters, and it is okay to leave it in milliliters in this equation as long as you're consistent with your units. There is a little caveat to this equation, though. If you're working with a, an acid or more commonly a, a base that has multiple basic or acidic units on it, like calcium hydroxide, for example, has two hydroxide units, well, you need to place that multiple of, of two, in this case, in front of the term for that side. If it's a base, you put it in front of the base side. We'll see an example of that here in a moment. Let's try this equation or this problem. In the lab, a chemist titrates 0 0.150 molar sodium hydroxide solution into a flask containing 10 milliliters of 0 0.350 molar acetic acid. What volume of base is required to reach the equivalence point of the titration? So once again, we're going to use this titration equation, and we're just going to plug and chug to solve for the answer. The molarity of the acid is given to us in the problem. It says the acid, this acetic acid here, is 0 0.350 molar. So that goes in for M sub A. The volume of the acid is also given to us. It's 10 milliliters, so that goes in for V sub A. And then M sub B is the molarity of the base. That's given to us in the problem. The base is sodium hydroxide, so that's 0 0.150 molar. And then volume of the base, VB, that's what we're solving for. It asks us what volume of base is required. So that's our unknown. So this is just a simple algebra problem. When you take 0.35 times 10 
and divide by 0.15, you get the correct answer of about 23.3 milliliters as your answer. So that's how much base it should take to get to the equivalence point. Let's try another example. In an acid-base titration, it requires 36.48 milliliters of calcium hydroxide to reach the endpoint when being titrated into 15.00 milliliters of 0 0.300 molar HCl. What is the concentration of the calcium hydroxide solution? And you might realize that maybe I should have said equivalence point, right? Sometimes we use them interchangeably when maybe we shouldn't. Anyway, we're going to plug and chug into the equation MAVA equals MBVB, but I want you to notice something. We're working with calcium hydroxide, and this is one of those strong bases that has two hydroxide units along with it, which means we're going to have to put a two right here in the equation to make the stoichiometry work out. Just realize that sometimes you have to do that. Now, we can work the problem as usual. The molarity of the acid is given to us. It's 0 0.300 molar of our acid. So that goes in for M sub A. The V sub A, the volume of the acid, is 15 milliliters. So that goes in for V sub A. Then the molarity of the base, well, that's what we're solving for. It says, what is the concentration of the calcium hydroxide. So I'm going to leave my 2 there, of course, and then M sub B is what I'm solving for. V sub B is the volume of the base, and it says 36.48 milliliters. So that's going to be the volume of the base. So now we just have to solve the problem. Solve for M sub B. So 0.3 times 15, divide by 2, Divide by 36.48, and you'll find that the answer is M sub B equals 0.0617 molar calcium hydroxide. So that's how you use the titration equation. Now we're going to look at a couple different types of titrations in this video and the next video as well, and the one after it too. And the first type is a strong acid, strong base titration. Now, in the laboratory in AP Chemistry, this is probably not the most common one to work with, but this is the easiest one, so we're going to start with this. Uh, don't forget that when you add a strong acid to a strong base, the net ionic equation is always the same. This is just like we did uh, in, uh, in our last video in Section 4. A strong acid, strong base will always be H plus plus OH minus yields water. So... That makes it a little bit easier because you know that the net ionic equation is always that. So you just write that down. Now, don't forget that there's only really one product here. The product, and, and the only product, is pure water in its liquid form. So that means that the pH at the equivalence point, that's the point where the moles of acid equal moles of base, will always be 7 as long as you're at 25 degrees Celsius. That's the equivalence point at that temperature. So it'll be 7. Now let's take a look at this problem right here. It says that in a titration, 0.200 molar sodium hydroxide is titrated into 40 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar HCl, hydrochloric acid. Determine the amount of sodium hydroxide required to reach the equivalence point and calculate the pH of the mixture after 20 milliliters of sodium hydroxide have been added. So to solve part A, we need to use the titration equation, MAVA equals MBVB, and just plug and chug into this. So the molarity of the acid is given to us in the problem. It's 0 0.100 molar, so I'm going to plug that in there. The volume of the acid, it says we're titrating it into 40 milliliters of this acid. So 40 milliliters is our V sub A. Our M sub B is 0.2 moles per liter, so that goes in there for the molarity of the base. We're trying to determine the amount of sodium hydroxide required, so V sub B is going to be our unknown, so we're going to leave that uh, as VB. Now we just have to solve using algebra, and when you multiply 40 times 0.1 and then divide that by 0.2, you'll find that your V sub B 
is 20 milliliters. And so it's going to take 20 milliliters to get to the equivalence point. Now part B asks, calculate the pH of this mixture after 20 milliliters of sodium hydroxide have been added. Well, we know that 20 milliliters, that's the equivalence point, isn't it? We just calculated that. So at the equivalence point in a strong acid, strong base titration, the pH is always 7, isn't it? As long as we're at 25 degrees Celsius. So that's the answer. It is 7.00. Now very often it's useful to take a look at a graph of how the pH changes over the course of the titration. So this is something called the titration curve. And notice that on the x-axis we have the volume of a base that has been added, and on the y-axis we have pH. So in our titration curve, notice that we start very, very low because in our flask down below we have a strong acid. So your pH will be pretty close to zero. And as we add the base, the pH goes up slowly. Notice how it goes up slowly and slowly and slowly. And then at a certain point, it just shoots up. And we'll talk about why that happens here in a later video. But notice that at some point it just shoots up and then it keeps on going up more gradually after that. It's almost like an S curve here. It looks like a big letter S. Well, in that curve, notice there is a point kind of in the, the exact middle point of that S. That's called the inflection point. And that inflection point in this titration curve denotes the pH of the equivalence point. So if we take that, 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 that inflection point and just kind of drag, drag it over here to the left, you'll notice that that inflection point, that equivalence point, is at pH 7. And so that's one of the ways that we just can look at this titration curve and see that this is a strong acid, strong base curve because its inflection point is at pH 7. I hope you've learned something about our introduction to, uh, to titrations here. If you've learned something, please uh, smash that like button. Hope to see you in my next video where we're going to move on and talk about uh, titrations including strong bases and weak acids. Hope to see you then.